I'm just on a new part of my walk and look how lovely this is. It's like a little village. There's a post box, a playground, some houses. Anyway, I have just looked at my Instagram DMs and one of you guys has messaged me. Thank you, Ash, for saying, Joel, I've just seen your new Dove Men advert on TV. And you know what? Yesterday I was on the verge of uh, messaging my agent to say any news of the Dove advert because the last time I record, I've recorded for this new advert about three times now. Um, like new different versions because you know it as i said in other voiceover vlogs they do go back and forth and like oh we didn't like the wording of that so we've got a new script and anyway so i've recorded for it about three times and then i haven't heard it oh i nearly died on that patch of mud um i haven't heard anything for maybe a month maybe six weeks so i was going to message my agent but yeah it's good to know it's on tv finally i now need to see it for myself so yeah as soon as i find it guys i will show you so lovely. Look at this house, guys. Oh my gosh, gorgeous. I've just had a thought, and I'm gonna run it past you, and I'm sure some of you are gonna roll your eyes, because you know me, I'm into everything. I'm like trying to do everything, trying to break back into the acting industry whilst running a YouTube channel, whilst doing voiceovers, whilst living my new life up north, whilst doing all sorts of investment property. So maybe I don't need another thing, but I've just thought I'm gonna say it, and then I'm gonna explain it. Shall I buy a horse? So guys, before I did acting, when I was about, I don't know, 12 years old, 13 years old, I was doing horse riding lessons. I got to like intermediate level. So I got to, I did the trot, the rising trot, the canter, and then I stopped there because I wanted to start acting class. And my parents were like, well, you can't do both because they're two expensive hobbies. So I chose acting and I stopped horse riding. Flash forward a few years to like age 17, I did work experience on a farm and I worked on a farm for like four years. It's these stables up here, which I will just show you that made me think of it as I walked down this hill. And I'm like, hang on. I, at first I was obsessed with horses when I was younger, before I got into acting. I subscribed to My Horse magazine and I always bought like stable brochures because where my dad worked, he was a partner in this firm and they had loads of land. And I was like, oh, we could build a stables on your work's land and then I could get a horse. And my parents were like, no, Joel. <laughs> so that's why I've had every animal under the sun. I've had dogs, guinea pigs, rabbits, ducks, chickens, hamsters, because basically my parents were like, you can have anything but not a horse. This was the stable and look, this field's empty. And I was like, imagine if I rented that. And then I was like, hang on, why don't I get a horse? Because you guys know I've spoken about how busy Keegan is in terms of, Keegan has rugby practice about three, four times a week sometimes. The kids have football practice and drama class a few times a week. I don't have any hobbies up here yet. Um, and that's okay, because I like being at home, I'm a home bird. But I was like, hang on, horse riding could be my hobby. And I could get my own horse <laughs> in, because there's lots of farmland around here, stable my horse in, like, you know, near my house and go horse riding. So I've just quickly Googled it about the cost of like having a horse. I think they call it livery, like a stable and full livery service. It can range from as little as 20 pounds per week to have your horse like cared for. Um, obviously the more, like if I wanted a full livery package, as in someone else would be there to feed my horse, muck out my horse when I'm not there, that can be as expensive as like 150 a week. But I'm like, I'd be free to look after my horse. Should I, 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 Joel, I don't know. I, th I feel like I'm sounding ridiculous, but it's not coming from a ridiculous place because as I've told you, I used to go horse riding. I've worked on a farm. <laughs> like I, I know how to look after a horse. I'm going to research it when I get home, guys. I want to know how much this will cost me. Imagine horse riding vlogs. Okay, now I've had 15 minutes to think about it. I'm like, okay, Joel, <laughs> do you have the time to look after a horse? I'm like, maybe I should just pay for horse riding lessons again and start that up. The last time I rode a horse was probably when I was like 18 or 19. So it's been a while, but I know it's just like riding a horse. <laughs> um, you see, as soon as I get back on the horse, I'll be fine. However, yeah, I'm just thinking, but I will start Googling about the costs of it. And I know from previous experience, you can loan a horse. So you sort of like essentially pay monthly to borrow somebody else's horse and treat it as if it's your own. So I could do that. Although I could buy my own horse and then loan my horse out to somebody else. Hmm. I just think I live in the countryside. Why not make the most of it? 
guys. I love this, my dream horse. When I was a kid, I used to draw pictures of it all the time. It was um, a black horse with a white blaze down its nose and white light feet, white, not white hooves. The hooves would be black, obviously, but um, white feet. So, um, I think that's got a name, but I'm not sure. But piebald horses are also really cute. They're the ones that look like a cow. They're like black and white or brown and white um, splodges. I don't know. Oh, my first horse I ever rode when I had lessons was called Tyson and he was a half shire. So it was half shire horse and then half something else. And then I think as I got more advanced, I think I even rode an Arab in the end. Um, Arab horses are like beautiful. They're very, I think they're quite slender, but like very powerful and they're very tall. But yeah, oh my gosh, it's bringing back all the, this horse knowledge. But I just have to take into account everything like buying the horse costs money the livery fees to get it stabled and looked after costs money the vets fees the insurance the tack so you know the saddle the every hold the reins all of those things their shoeing costs so what's it called like the farrier cost to get their shoes their hoofs looked after yeah there's lots to look into so when i'm home i'm gonna look into it and i'm gonna create a spreadsheet of all the costs and just see what i'm looking at um it's probably not doable probably not sensible you know me <laughs> but i'm suddenly so excited also my mum has just replied about the horse i voice noted them being like i'm gonna buy a horse and i haven't listened to it yet but i guarantee you they're just gonna laugh at me like i i, I i'll be embarrassing now if they don't but i'm fairly certain that the response is just going to be them thinking that I'm joking when I'm not. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> oh, Joel, you should have seen Dad's reaction. I just, I said, oh, I bet he slapped his forehead. Play, and he grabs his head and bends down with his head between his knees. You know, like Basil Fawlty does. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. I know their reaction oh, so yeah, well. That's so Vets fees, he's thinking Vets fees, yeah. Extra expenses of keeping a horse. <laughs> Good morning, guys. It is Monday and we're off to London today, which is very exciting. Well, I say very exciting. There's no major plans. Basically, Keegan has a speaking event on uh, tomorrow morning in London. And then I was like, well, I have some appointments that I can have in London today. So I've got an appointment at 4 p.m. I won't go into it, but um, so we're like, well, why don't we make like a day of it? Well, a couple of days of it. So we're heading into London later this morning. We've got a train at 11.30. Then, yeah, we're gonna go out for dinner with our friends tonight and then go to Keegan's speaking event tomorrow and then come back home. But because of that, the dogs went last night to our friend's house. It's just so weird without them here. Look, the empty bowls. It's so, so quiet. Um, also guys, last night on Sunday was the night that I launched my campaign for the Dogs Trust. I am so overwhelmed with the support because I set the target to 250 pounds. After posting on Instagram, we pretty much hit the 250 target. We got to 220, so I was like, well, I haven't even released the YouTube video yet, so I better increase it, so I increased it to 500. After posting the YouTube video, I checked the, the campaign, we got to 900, so I was like, I'm gonna have to increase it again. So I've increased it to 2,000 pounds. At the moment, we're at about 1,200. All the money will go to the charity, even if we don't hit the target. Um, but the target's just there, just as a nice thing to have. So I'm just overwhelmed with the support. So thank you so much. I've already had my local Dogs Trust branch reach out to me. Actually, one of my viewers had a connection to the Dogs Trust in Leeds and was like, um, let me see if I can hook you up. And then they reached out and were like, would you like to come for a tour and meet some dogs that need rehoming? I was like, absolutely. So I'm gonna email them this morning and yeah, we'll see. Maybe maybe I could do some dog vlogs of going and, and also feature some of the dogs. And if any of you are up for rehoming a dog and are able to, then maybe I could be matchmaker. That'd be so good. We are on our way to the station. I actually, Keegan wanted to leave at quarter two. I was like, no, let's leave at 10.30 just to give us definitely enough time to get to the station. He was ready at 25 past. <laughs> and I'm, I'm the one that's delayed us, it's now 10.39. And that's all me. You're the problem, it's you. I'm the problem, it's you. I mean, I'm the problem, it's me. <laughs> um, but anyway, we should get to the station in time. In time for an almond croissant. Ooh, there, there's a nice, coffee shop at the train station that does 
A nice almond croissant. Oh, I can't wait. A croissant. A croissant. I haven't had time to do my hair, but I can do that later. I, have, I never do my hair. No, but your hair, look, like, it holds its shape, whereas when I have a shower, mine doesn't, and it just oh, I goes down. I mine over after I have a shower. Uh, have you showered today? I haven't have a shower at the hotel before. Uh, okay, yeah. Oh, nice, freshen up. I saw a comment this morning saying that I was selfish. Why? Because I went to bed when you were choking. You don't, you guys don't know the full story. I was, you know, I was running you through, and I wouldn't go back to bed. Keen no, kept saying, go to bed. Yeah, he was, yeah, he, 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 he was, he was not selfish. He was the antithesis of self <laughs> selfish. He was selfless. I was. He I was, couldn't go to bed. He was very loving. It was very sweet. I appreciate it very much. Good. Well, Get that camera you. out, mate. <laughs> see, that's why you can't judge people online because you didn't see. You guys didn't see it. I was there caring for him until literally we'd been up for maybe like an hour, and he was like, "Babe, I'm not going to hospital. I think I'm fine. Like, but I can't sleep. So you just go to bed." So I, I did as I was told. For once. For once. Anyway, I can't remember what I was saying, but uh, oh yeah, my friend Brogan Tate, she goes to the hub hotels quite a lot in London. So we've booked a hub hotel and it looks quite nice, I think. It's. <laughs> what? What was that inflection? It looks quite nice. Well, I mean, no, it's definitely better. I think it's owned by Premier Inn or Travel Lodge or something, but it's like their nicer version. So I'm like, part of me is skeptical. It's no Soho House, let's put it that way. But it was like a, a fraction of the price of Soho House, so yeah, we, can't complain. We, we don't need luxury all the time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we'll see. Anyway, we need to get to the station. Yeah. Here's to the good days, here's to the sorrow. We're on the train, we made it. Dad's doing some work over there. Uh, <laughs> got a um, couple of books here. And my laptop. You think you're Johnny Five and you can read. <laughs> yeah. It's because I don't know what I want to do on this journey. I'm like, shall I do some editing on my laptop? Shall I read? Do I want to read fiction or non fiction? So the choices are endless. So. <sighs> Wakefield. Right, I'm in the room. Um, basically, we arrived. It's like ten past. Keegan's therapy session started at three, uh, two o'clock. So he's down in the bar doing a session up here. The plan was for him to do the session up here. I'd wait in the bar, but then because it took so long to check in, he's in the bar, and I've come upstairs. But yeah, as I said, I don't know if I told you on this camera. I think I said on Keegan's vlog. I'm just feeling so tired and all shivery. Hence why I've got the coat on. I'm like so cold and shivery and tender and I'm like oh no am I coming down with something so I think I'm gonna try and have a nap now while Keegan's doing his therapy call and that's I never thought I'd say this but I think I'm gonna turn that off I yeah you know me guys I love AC um, but not today I better text Keegan the room number no, I'm just getting B-roll oops Ooh. I look like a tourist now Cheers, we've come for an espresso martini before my, my appointment's in five minutes, but I better have a new partner. Hey everyone, we are just getting ready. We've been out for my appointment. As you saw, we had a little espresso martini. We've just gotten ready and showered, and now we're meeting our friends. Oh, let me pop you here. Now we're meeting our friends for dinner. Um, we're going to a Greek place called Opso. It's like a Greek tapasi place. Um, I look like Dami Zuko. <laughs> yeah, you're very attractive. You're my Dami Zuko. And we've just had some good news, so I can actually finally tell these guys now. You know the voiceover that I've been doing? Some of you guessed it, because I said it's a client I've worked for before. I am now the new voice of Duff Men. Again! They've had me back again. This is like the third year now. He's done very well. I'm very proud of him. Thank you. So, um, yeah, my agent has just given me the news of the buyout, like the fee for that. And I... It was in McDonald's at the time, and I gasped. Yeah, I went down for a wee, and when I came, I came back upstairs and it looked shell-shocked and I thought oh, someone's accosted him in McDonald's it wasn't <laughs> no I just was I've never yeah that's I've never earned anything like that before so it's a celebration it was 20 pounds 20 pounds <laughs> so drinks on me tonight yes but yeah we're gonna go down to the hotel bar have a drink here and then and then I'm off to work on the dog <laughs> you do look like a bouncer you could be a bouncer because you're, you're big enough I wasn't see he's not actually that much taller than me people are like oh Keegan's really big but and he is. He's definitely broader than me and more muscular than me, but he's... Well, we're not that different height-wise. 
Anyway, let's go. Guys, we forgot to bring an umbrella. So it is very wet today in London and we are getting very wet. This is Gavin and Arpan, by the way. Have you ever been on my YouTube? No. I've never. Because I couldn't film last time because we were staying in the house. So oh, yeah. these are our friends and uh, we're just having a civilized meal. Yeah, no, friends, no, friends. <laughs> Good morning, guys. It's 8.30 in the morning. We're up and ready. We've packed our bags and it's now time to go to the XL for Keegan's big talk. Josh, it sounds poorly, do not it? Do I? You sound a bit poorly. Yeah. I am getting ill, I think, which is not good because I go to Scotland on Sunday. But never mind. Let's we're, go. Let's have ready. a coffee. We're, we're ready. ready. We're now changing onto the Elizabeth line. This will be the first time I've ever been on it. It's a brand new line. Excited. When the Elizabeth line first launched a few months ago, all my YouTube friends who lived in London did videos like first time on the Elizabeth line. I think all the videos did really well because obviously everyone was intrigued. So if I was a better YouTuber, I would have done the same. But here I am months later. <laughs> Must have, look, look how quiet it is. You can't even hear. Oh my gosh. So far, yeah, is the Keegan was just saying a very light, very airy, not busy. It's very large, like large. Yeah, it's like an airport. It's like a proper train. Well, we've arrived at the XL a little bit early, which is good, so we might grab a drink. My voice is going, I don't know what's wrong. I've been here a few times, quite a lot for YouTube conventions. Um, for travel shows, for I used to work here before YouTube was my job. I was telling Keegan I used to do promo work here, where I'd work at events like we're talking at. Well, Keegan's talking at. I'm not. Here we go. Be like on registration, getting people badges and things. So it's going to bring back some not nice memories and some nice memories from the YouTube conventions. So yeah, the XL is absolutely huge. We're walking there now. Um, when I was here, one of the times, we were here for a YouTube convention in the same building, in the same place. They had a Jehovah's Witness event and they also had a Love Island event. So it was a very eclectic mix of people in this place. That's how big it is. We've arrived. Ooh, American school bus. I wonder what that's for. How cool. So this is the bit, the theatre where Keegan's going to be talking. And it's one of those silent disco type ones where they can have all the different talks at the same time. Right, we're all done. Keegan's just nipping to the loo. His talk went really well, very proud of him. We're now just off home because our train is at 1.30, but it is such a nice day. I've just come out into the sun. I need a tan and I need some UV rays. Look, this is the Yacht Hotel which is very cool. I've been on there for a party once before, but I've never stayed there. Here he is. Light rail. Just oh, Docklands light rail, that's it. Um, how did it go in your eyes? In my eyes. In your eyes. The sun's in my eyes. I know. Um, yeah, I thought it went well. Um, mm -hmm. We had the most people. <laughs> so Out that's of all five, that six theatres. That's yeah. all I was bothered about. <laughs> Kept looking over, I thought the purple got in there, but then I was filled right up, didn't it? So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was there to see you, babe. Yeah, it was good though. Yeah, yeah it was really I feel good. like it, man. I didn't, it's a uh, good message. I didn't bump into any furniture, and I remembered all my lines. So. Yeah, didn't let um, out a sneaky fart. No farts. Uh, yeah, couldn't, couldn't, uh, couldn't ask for it to go better, really. Yeah. The Eagles have landed in King's Cross, and we're actually now just on our way to a gay bookshop called Gaze the Word, which I've walked past many a time. I've seen many people on Instagram go there and uh, I've never been, so, and Keegan hasn't either, so we're gonna go, see if there are any gay books that we want. Gooks. Gooks, I'm excited. Uh, although I feel like, I don't know if I'm intelligent enough to read. A book. Uh, a book, <laughs> never read a book. Uh, I don't, I wanna learn more about my own community and the history, but I'm worried that I might choose a dry book that I then never read, so I wanna be careful with my purchases. You'll get, a, you get your vibe with a book, won't you? Get a vibe, yeah. And, and I, th I think you're clever enough to read any book. I think you, Thank you. You don't want to read a book that you find yourself. Yes, that's it. Here it is, guys. Let's have a look.
We've come to a lovely little deli cafe called Fork. We've got some toasties coming and we've got this for afterwards to share. I did buy those two books that I showed you. Yes, yeah, so I'll give you a review when I've read them. back home and uh, we've even got some chocolate pots to enjoy en route. Right, we've just picked up the doggos. Fen is being very needy. I think very, he's, very he's missed, missed us, isn't he? Mm. And Ava's on the back seat. Ava, she's having a lovely time. She's obsessed with the balls. Spends the whole time cuddling Andrew. <laughs> anyway, time to go home. We'll put him in the back. <laughs> <laughs> 